Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the NASCAR Heat 5 Clint Boyer Season Mode. Currently in the point standings, we have a 223-point gap above Martin Truex Jr. Then behind him by four points is Kyle Busch, Ryan Newman, Kurt Busch, Joey Logano, and Kevin Harvick, who DNF'd in the last race at Kentucky. Uh, and Matt Kenseth scored his first win in the 42 at Kentucky, locking himself in. We are now up to 12 different winners. It's getting pretty spicy. Anyway, we're on to New Hampshire, a half-decent track in this game. I hear a lot of people say that they don't really like it in this. Much rather take a race at New Hampshire above Texas. So anyway, let's get on with race number 22 as we inch ever closer to the playoffs. So here we are at New Hampshire, jumping straight into qualifying. Very much a rhythm racetrack. As you have to get used to uh, how you kind of have to arc it in mid-corner. You, know, you kind of have to diamond it just a little bit because of the the way the banking here works. You know, with the second groove being higher banked than the bottom. You could really pull some momentum off the corners by uh, by using that to your advantage. All right, come into the green. Count. Just have faith in the car when you're crossing over the different areas of banking. Unlike most tracks in this game, the car doesn't want to spin out at Loudon. And it's good to know you can have some confidence in your car at any given racetrack, you know. Look at that, only a tenth off the pole. Fifth. So, that's one of my best qualifying spots uh, so far this year. Who won the pole, though? Kyle Busch, then Truex. All our big competition is starting up front. As we look down through the field, Ross Chastain is the last place starter. So we are starting in fifth and take a look at the top stories. Chase Elliott isn't nearly as fast. and He's going to miss the playoffs, ain't he? Brad crashed during qualifying. That's kind of good to hear. And Kyle Busch won the pole, which is not so good. Starting on the inside. I wonder how uh, the next NASCAR game is going to program in the choose zone on the restarts. Just very curious as to how that's going to work. Dive bomb. Clint Boyer style. Just make a three wide move for the lead at a short track. Let uh, Kyle Busch drop through the middle. Truex up to second already. This is one of Truex's, I think, ten home tracks, right? Because, you know, his home track includes Watkins Glen, Stafford, Walls, Dover, New Hampshire, every track in the northeast, and maybe some in the south. Beltsville, the old track in Maryland, he used to have to run uh, mufflers to run. You know, the whole, the whole list of New England racetracks and uh, some mid-Atlantic. <laughs> What racetrack does he really identify with? It should be Wall Stadium, shouldn't it? That's in New Jersey. So, at least I'd, I'd like to think that he identifies with it. By the way, you want to know why I'm so good at Loudon? It's because I'm Clint Moyer. But you know, Clint's first career win came here back in 07 which was a surprisingly good season for Clint. You know, sure, he started on his lid and on fire at Daytona, but he had a really good, like, late chase run where he was even in contention to win the championship that season. And I'm not even kidding. That 07 car could have done the unthinkable at that time and, you know, upset Johnson and Gordon. But, uh, you know, if it would have been, like, 2012 Clint Boyer, performance, but in that car, Clint probably would have won the championship in 07. 07 in the 07. Am I the only one that kind of wishes because, uh, you know, RCR got Jack Daniels to sponsor the three car, I think it was last year at the Roval, that uh, they could reopen the 07 and or the 7 car. Well, now that Spire has the number 7, still the 07, but still, that car just, it looked great. Except for when it was the direct TV car. If it would have, you know, not looked like a weird combination of two different brand, brands that have nothing to do with each other, 
you know, Jack Daniels whiskey and direct TV, you know, television service. It really didn't make much sense being together. But uh, if, if they would have differentiated a, a little bit more with the Jack Daniels car being strictly Jack Daniels and uh, the DirecTV car being strictly DirecTV, I think it would have looked a little bit better. But who am I really to complain about the way a car looks? It's not the way it looks, it's the way it drives. Which is why uh, the, the Wayne Peterson ARCA cars are an anomaly. Because they drive like how they look. I'm not even making that up. Looks like sometimes the numbers they show up with are boards. Flag. Caution flags out, nobody's pitting. Neither am I. But anyway, what I mean by boards is it kind of looks like they take, like, wallpaper or something to make the, make the number zero out of it. Because sometimes it's square, like it's 2 by 4 some, some kind of wood product. It never looked right. Restarts are crucial here, as they are everywhere, but, you know, you really want to clear everyone racing with you so that you can have the entire racetrack to corner with. Which is why I made that dive bomb into turn one on the start, is because I need the entire racetrack, and I'm not even kidding, to turn here. You know what I really like about Loudon? It's more or less... Uh, ever since they redid the banking in, I think, like, 2002 or three, forget which year it was, sometime right around there, um, it kind of became, like, a, a elongated version of IRP. Especially now with, you know, PJ1 being a thing, it gives the driver a lot of options. And uh, I never really used to be a big Loudon fan, but I tell you what, the last few seasons, the racing here has gotten phenomenal. Especially in 2020, I mean, even though when Brad kind of dominated that race, when, when his car started to drop back, I mean, the racing was, was, was really good. And, you know, I know in a, a couple parts ago I said I'd rather have them race at Milwaukee than New Hampshire, which is probably still true, but I'm more or less referring to back when they had two races at New Hampshire. You know, New Hampshire's a very good one-race-a-season racetrack. Uh, and I feel like it its spot on the schedule deserves to stay. But it should have never had to. I mean, we all know how it got to. It had to kill another short track to do it. But it's a perfect one-race-a-season racetrack. Tires are starting to wear a little bit. The field's starting to catch me. i got to really pay attention to these few laps here. <laughs> okay, the car pushed coming out of turn number four, and I had to fight Kyle back. But I'm I'm actually kind of glad that Ryan Blaney took second because, you know, I want to extend that point gap. I'm going to put some tape on the front end, see how it handles. Not too major of an adjustment because the car feels great. Blaney took the lead off pit road, but that's fine. You know, I started the race in fifth, and I took the lead by turn two, so... 
Either way, that was a really fun stage because the car started to fall apart at the end, and uh, I had just enough to hold off Kyle there. So we are going to have to pit at least once in this stage, unlike the first stage. So I'm probably going to extend it as far as I can. Because, you know, this is, this is a track where if you pit and it doesn't work out in your favor, you can fall one lap down. So I don't want that to happen. This car has got great exit speed. You know, from the exit of turn two and four down to the entrance to one and three this car can just motor you know it gets gets right up off the corner and you know you can be confident in the throttle you don't have to second guess it that that's on fresh tires obviously you know towards the end it was starting to get a little ugly on the last run right there that was the diamonding that i was talking about in qualifying that you got to try and do because because you saw how much of a gap i put on blaney by doing that kind of let the car point and then full throttle it off and then you get these huge runs down the straightaways because you know more or less the turns here are the same as IRP but the straightaways are twice as long at least that's the way I see it you know I don't know if that's mathematically correct obviously I haven't measured it but that's the way I see it and that's the way I drive it and uh, it's it's always done me good But remember, if you're going to run here in this game, you have to have confidence in your right foot. Because uh, if you don't, you know, if the car hesitates and it wants to spin, that will pretty much put an end to your hopes of uh, running any bit good at this track. Because the car needs security in the rear end on, on acceleration. If you don't have that, you're not going to be quick. And uh, it's never really a driver thing. See, like right there, that's not having confidence in it the car slid but you know if the car would have hooked up perfectly and gotten off the corner that would have been a great exit much like that that corner right there the car wanted to get off yellow flag. that was a little uh, distracting right there anyway yellow flag nobody pitted Looks like with this caution, we might not have to pit to get to the end of the stage anyway. Well, it looks like we, we might either have to save one lap or pit. That's kind of the options. Uh, I like the odds of saving better than I do the odds of, uh, you know, pitting. Because I feel like if I try and save one lap, that won't really end up screwing me over later in the run. Because, you know, if I try and pit and get to the end, odds are I would end up losing, uh, be on, being on the losing side of the pit strategy is what I'm saying. Because, you know, a caution would probably end up coming out, ruining the whole plan and uh, possibly trapping me a lap down. Either way, I wouldn't score stage points, and that's kind of the goal of the season, is to accumulate as many points entering the playoffs, specifically for the final round, well, the penultimate round, actually, because I do not like Kansas or Texas. And even though I'm pretty good at Martinsville in this game, I don't want to have to rely on it to get to the championship four. You know, I want to have a buffer coming into Phoenix. And then, quite frankly, my plan entering Phoenix is to wreck all the other three championship contenders. I am not going to play fair at a track where the game doesn't play fair. Car is really slidey now. Ten laps to go on the stage, but I still only have nine laps on gas. I'll be honest with you. When you got a car hounding you like Blaney and you're not at a super speedway, the best way to hold somebody off is to not look at your mirror. Because then, you know, you can focus on the track ahead. 
But now, you kind of have to focus on beating somebody else. Because I've got Blaney on my inside. Still there. Inside. And you know what? I'm going to pressure Blaney in the turn three. Right here. Yeah, see, I need the entire racetrack to corner, and when I'm deprived of that, I can't really turn. So, I, you know, I need the entire racing surface to arc my way into the corners and, and arc the corner off. Okay. <laughs> that was bad. Um... I'm going to try and change as little as possible to get to the end of the stage. Justin Haley stayed out. <laughs> he gained 32 positions. Block for me. Block for me. I'll pay you money. Here we go. Justin Haley doing me a big time favor right there. Although it did let Kyle Busch move his way up into second. I'll be honest with you, I don't know why more people didn't stay out. Because that would have made a lot of sense considering that I was only like one or maybe even a half a lap short. On the short run, this car is amazing. In the long run, not so much. But honestly, if we got an even longer run than the last few times, I could probably maintain the lead a little bit better because that that restart in the middle of each stage is what kills my progression. Because, you know, you, you wear your tires halfway out, and then, bam, the cars that are behind you are right on your back bumper again. Anyway, I won the stage, but Kyle Busch got second. It looks like he's uh, taken second spot off Truex again, though. So this time I'm really getting ser the service I needed. Down to 14th, but that's all right. I had repair damage and so on. I see Bobby Carter in the top 10. That's pretty cool. Going to try and pass the most recent winner, Kenseth, in the turn number one. So we have to pit at least once. I've got the ability to turn that low because of these fresh tires. That's just great. Yeah. Look at that. You just got to get in there. Already up to fourth. Almost killed myself right there. Got a car high now. All right, Blaney, you know the deal. I need the entire racetrack to turn. So get used to me taking both the inside and outside lines in one turn just to, just to make the corner. Here you go, Kyle. There you go. And that's a lead. So now I'm just going to try and control the field for as long as I can. So unlike the way I was driving in the first two stages, now I'm not going to try to force the car to run any lower than it wants to. So by that I mean I'll be staying up in the banking for uh, the majority of the time I'm running by myself. So you know, from the second to the third groove, where it is actually banked, because the, the bottom, quite frankly, feels flat, even though I think it is like 8 degrees. I think it's 8 on the bottom, 14 in the, in the middle and top, if I'm not mistaken. I watched a little bit of uh, that Winter Heat, NASCAR Heat Pro Series race uh, at Dover, mainly because, you know, I heard Alan Cavana was going to be in the booth, which was the real reason I wanted to see a little bit of it. But it, it got me thinking, how do those guys actually drive Dover? You know, and I know that, you know, that, that they really are 
professionals at this. You know, they, they spend pr probably too much of their lives on NASCAR heat. Because uh, I, I would have no hair on my head left, just so you know, if I was actually, like, if that was my career playing this game. Because I already rip enough of it out that I've had to start wearing a hat. I'm kidding, but still. Uh, I really th am impressed with anyone getting around Dover and making it look kind of, like, realistic in this game. You know, because every time I see, uh, you know, say, Winvow or myself run Dover, it looks really awkward, you know? But that's... I've always just blamed that on NASCAR heat, but maybe there's a finesse to it. It's probably a trade secret because, you know, professionals do it. But still, they make it... They make the game look good. Not too good, though, because I recall somebody flipping ridiculously in that race. I mean, sure, Joey flipped it over about ten years ago, but not in the same way. The key to flat tracks is to preserve the right rear tire, because it's really the only thing that's steering the car. Is, uh, is your right foot and the right rear tire. And uh, keeping that underneath you is really important. I think I proved that at, uh, at Phoenix, where I burned off the right rear tire almost in its entirety. And the car got kind of undrivable in the later stint of that race. Got about eight laps left on gas. 14 laps remaining in the stage. Car's getting really sliding now, but, you know, the right rear is below 39%. So it's become a little bit tough to just lug this car around. That confidence I was talking about earlier, getting back onto the throttle, it's gone, just so you know. It's gone with the right rear tire is where it's gone. So Blaney is starting to catch me, but the pit stop's going to be happening pretty soon. I already got a car on pit road, actually. That's Chase Elliott. Blaney's pitting. That's a bit surprising. Maybe they know something I don't. Denny is staying on the racetrack with me. All right, so I'm either going to have to pit, in th pit this lap or the next. I'm thinking about making it the next. Let's see when Denny comes in. The next. All right, so I'm going to be pitting right now. No repair. And let's see how they do. They better not screw up big time because that's that's been the theme of the season. Last pit stop when it matters most. 20 seconds. Fifteen point nine. I don't know about you, that sounds a little slow. Considering a you know lap here takes about twenty point nine seconds. Okay. All right, dig, dig, dig. Let's see how they did. Yellow down, back or down. They didn't do very good. Because, of course, Bobby Carter would have to wreck. Well, I'm in eighth. MTJ. I'm going to wreck you on this restart. All right, be Better watch right. out. Three laps remaining. Clear. 
I'm really not going to let anything get in the way of scoring a race win here. It's been a little bit since I've been in the position to win a race. But I tell you what, I'm glad to do it at Loudoun. <laughs> the car almost flipped upside down. But it's been a goal of mine this season to get to get the win at Loudoun because of, uh, you know, Clint Boyer's success here. Wouldn't be a good retirement season for Clint without a win at New Hampshire. So now this is win number nine, which means that I have tied Kevin Harvick in wins for the 2020 season, even though he hasn't yet won a race in this playthrough. But he sure won quite a few in reality, I'll tell you that. And this is for that stage I almost gift-wrapped you. Can't quite do the fourth gear burnout, but I sure can do the third right there. Uh, the way the gear ratio is set up for this car, can't really do the fourth gear. Ooh! Well, I can once I get up to speed. I got no idea how I'm going to make this work at, you know, 100. I kind of did. And Clint Boyer has won at Loudoun. A throwback to the start of his career, and I've blown the engine. Tell me back. You know, I feel very much like Brad Keselowski this season. Uh, when I show up to a big track, I'm kind of just there to accumulate points. But you give me a short track, I got a legitimate shot at winning the race. Anyway, last place, Chad Fincham. Unfortunately, Bobby Carter was a lap down. But look at Chase Elliott. 37th, and he didn't even wreck out, but he did get trapped one lap down because of that yellow that happened when Bobby Carter spun mid-pit mid cycle. So uh, it's it's looking like Chase Elliott's either going to have to pull off a, a remarkable win or just have to miss the playoffs. Anyway, Hamlin got second, Truex third, then Brad, Blaney, and Logano. Look at that point gap. 1,025 points for me, nine wins, Second in points, 771. And that's with two wins. Still 12 winners on the season. It's still mathematically possible that we could get 16 winners. I kind of want to see it. I kind of don't. But anyway, yet another trophy in front of the 14 car. Clint Boyer's first win at this track since, what, 2011? And that was the one that I think he got fined like 190 points for winning that race, didn't he? There was something illegal about the car, but I forget what it was. Anyway, Boyer back in victory lane. The fastest lap was actually set by me, which is something I wasn't expecting. I led the most laps. That's kind of obvious. 67 laps out of 76. Brad was on the move. Started 40th and finished 4th. That's, that's a good comeback. And Daniel started 6th, finished 32nd. That's a pretty harsh drop-off. So the point gap down to Martin Truex Jr. is now 254 points. I'm the first driver into the quadruple digit numbers with 1,025 points on the season, 291 stage points. 
uh, 18 stage wins, nine race wins. As we look back in the standings, it's Truex back up into second, Kyle Busch third, Kurt Busch fourth, Logano fifth, Newman sixth, Harvick in seventh, and Ryan Blaney in eighth. Currently, the drivers trying to make their way in are Byron, Reddick, Johnson, and Eric Jones. Chase Elliott is so far back, he needs a win. Elliott dropped down to 19th in the standings with his 37th place finish at Loudoun. And as we look back, Bubba's still in 27th. And dead last is Bobby Car. It's not Joey Gase. There's now a one-point margin between Brennan Gaughan and Bobby Carter for the last car championship. Joey Gase has fallen out of contention by scoring, I guess, a bunch of points rather recently. And now we head on to race number 23 from Michigan. It's one of those Brad Keselowski-style seasons. I'm just hoping to score a couple points here. It's a bit too big of a track for me to expect to win on. But anyway, consumer, Consumers Energy 400 next time out in the NASCAR Heat 5 Clint Boyer season mode, and I will see you then.